Welcome to EPG Patshala. Today our subject is Indian Epigraphy and today we will discuss about the Kharoshthi script. Now you have already learnt about the Indus script and the history of writing and now Kharoshthi is an important script together with Brahmi which are very important scripts of India. The learning objectives are the discovery of the script and its decipherment, the geographical distribution of the script, the period of the script, the nature of the Kharoshthi documents, the language, the origin of the Kharoshthi scripts and the different theories regarding the origin of the Kharoshthi script, the writing techniques and the general characteristics of the Kharoshthi script. Now, first to begin with the discovery of the script, how Kharoshthi script was discovered. The Kharoshthi script was first seen on some coins of the foreign rulers, the Indo-Greeks. As you can see in this slide that here we have a coin of Eucratides, he was an Indo-Greek ruler. On the obverse side which is the front side of the coin, the script is the legend of the coin is written in Greek script that is Basileos Megalo Eucratido and on the reverse side of that is the opposite side of the coin, the script same uh, legend is written in Prakrit language and in Kharoshthi script which is a translation of the Greek legend. So these coins were first discovered and then people got to learn about the Kharoshthi script in the first quarter of the 19th century. Later the same script was also found on two inscriptions of the time of Kanishka, the Kushano ruler Kanishka from Manikyala in Pakistan. Again sometimes later the same script was found on the rock edicts of Ashoka from Shabazz Garhi and Manshera, these two places are today situated in Pakistan. Now you can see the Shabazz Garhi rock edict, these are a copy of the major rock edicts of Ashoka, here we have a set of 14 rock edicts and this has been written in the Kharoshti script on the rock, this is from Shabazz Garhi. Now, the decipherment of the Kharoshthi script, how the Kharoshthi script was first read. It was James Princep, you know about James Princep who deciphered the Ashokan Khar um, Brahmi script in 1837. He also read uh, some of the letters uh, of the Kharoshthi script for the first time. How he was able to read the script? He was able to read a number of letters on coins by comparing them. As I have already told you that by comparing the Kharoshthi legend with the Greek legend and by understanding the translation, if it is in Greek, it is Maha Basileos Megalo Eucratido, the um, translation in Northwestern Prakrit would be uh, Maharajasa Mahatasa Eucratidasa. So by comparing the Greek letters with the Kharoshthi letters, you can read the letters. So this was the way by which James Princep was able to read a number of letters on coins by comparing them to the Greek letters occurring on the other side of coins. Then he could recognize only 11 to 12 letters. The rest were later deciphered by C. Lassen, A. Cunningham and E. Norris by the middle of the 19th century. And how the name, how did they know that the name of the script was Kharoshthi? That Kharoshthi is the name of this specific type of script was first suggested by the scholar Terence the Lacoupere in 1886 to 1887 on the basis of the Lalita Vistara. Now Lalita Vistara is a text in Buddhist hybrid Sanskrit and it belongs to the 3rd century AD. And again the name of the Kharoshthi script occurs in the Chinese encyclopedia Fa Yuan Chu Lin in the 7th century. Now specifically in this Lalita Vistara we have a list of 64 scripts and the Brahmi and the Kharoshthi are the number 1 and number 2 in this list. So these are most probably the most important scripts of early India that is why they have been mentioned in number 1 and number 2. Now you can see a geographical distribution of the Kharoshthi script where the Kharoshthi documents were found. First we begin with the northwestern part of India, the kingdom is known as Gandharo that is why the language for which the Kharoshthi script was used was called the Gandhari Prakrit, it is also known as the northwestern Prakrit. So Gandharo or the northwest 
including Pakistan and the northern part of Afghanistan is the core territory for the use of the Kharoshthi script. Further north, the script is also found in Swat Valley, in the Kabul River valleys and also in Kyrgyzstan. Next we move on to Central Asia where we have Kharoshthi scripts but there is a basic difference between the Central Asian Kharoshthi and the Northwestern Kharoshthi. In Central Asia Kharoshthi is not found on inscriptions, they were written on Bart's Bart manuscripts and they were basically manuscripts from religious texts like the Buddhist Dhammapada or they were used to write some administrative documents of the kingdoms, who, the rulers who used to rule there. So, these are the two areas, the Central Asia and the Northwestern part of the Indian subcontinent where the Kharoshthi script were used. Again, we have also found the records containing Kharoshthi script in the west coast of India. There the Kshatrapa and uh, the Kardamaka family of the Kshatrapa and the Kshaharata family of the Kshatrapas also used Kharoshthi script together with the Greek script and also the Brahmi script. Further to the east, we find Kharoshthi script in, the, in some places in Bihar, but this has been regarded as imports from the northwest since this Bihar is not at all a Kharoshthi using territory. Also in the south, in one of the Ashokan edicts from Karnataka, we have a single word in Kharoshthi script engraved by the engraver of that inscription. But in this area in South India and in Bihar and further to the east, Kharoshthi has been regarded as imports that is it has been used by people who came from the northwest. So as you understand that Kharoshthi is basically a script of the northwest. Now the principal area of the use of the inscriptions, the use of inscriptions in Kharoshthi we have found in the territory along and around the Indus, the Swat and the Kabul river valleys that is in the Gandhara kingdom. The later discoveries were made in the area to the north of the Hindu Kush in Bactria and in Uzbekistan and in Tajikistan. Graffiti in Kharoshthi is found in Chilas and other places in the upper Indus. In the south and the southwest, the distribution is up to the Baluchistan and in the southeast, Kangra around Delhi and Mathura. These are the principal areas in which Kharoshthi inscriptions have been. Now the coins, coins in Kharoshthi script have been issued by the Indo-Greek and Scythian rulers, then the Western Kshatrapas about whom we have already discussed. In Central Asia as I have already discussed that Kharoshthi has been used by the rulers to write the manuscripts and not the inscriptions. Now the period of the Kharoshthi script. The period of the Kharoshthi script is very short. The earliest date in which we find Kharoshthi script in 3rd century BC in the Manshera and Shabazgari edicts of Ashoka. So it is Ashoka who first used the Kharoshthi script in his edicts. So Kharoshthi most probably originated not in the 3rd century BC but probably sometimes earlier during the Achaemenian era. The Achaemenian are actually the Persians who ruled in Iran and probably in the 4th to 5th century BC the script was discovered by them when they were they came to rule in the northwestern part of the Indian subcontinent. I will discuss this point in a later slide. Between the 1st century BC and the 2nd century CE the Kharoshthi script flourished under the Indo-Greeks, the Indo-Scythian, the Indo-Parthian and the Kushano kings. So you can see the Kharoshthi script was basically used by the foreign rulers and never by the Indian rulers. Now when the Kushana kings declined, the Kharoshthi fell out of use with the decline of the Kushanas in the 3rd century CE. So this is the period of the Kharoshthi script. Now the nature of the Kharoshthi documents. The Kharoshthi script is found in almost hundreds of inscriptions in stone and metal. Fresh inscriptions are also being discovered now. Majority of the Kharoshthi inscription, the subject matter is the donation by the Buddhists or they record the foundation of structures like monasteries or uh, donation of a cistern etc. The coin legends of foreign and indigenous rulers also con contain Kharoshthi scripts normally with other scripts like Brahmi, like Greek etc. In Central Asia, the Kharoshthi occurs already we have discussed that in the administrative documents, in the manuscript of Buddhist Dharmapadas and in the Chinese Buddhist texts. Now the language which is very important for which language people needed to use the Kharoshthi script. The Kharoshthi script was used to write the northwestern Prakrit language 
which was also known as the Gandhari Prakrit. Now, this is a very special dialect of the Prakrit language in which we have hard sounds. We have the prevalence of hard sounds. As for example, if we say Nagara in Sanskrit or in Prakrit or Nagala in Prakrit, this will become Nagrara in Gandhari Prakrit. And again, if uh, have, we want to say Bhagavata in Sanskrit or in Prakrit, this will come Bhagravata in Gandhari or Northwestern Prakrit. So, we have prevalence of a large number of hard sounds in Northwestern Prakrit. This Prakrit is a Middle Indo Aryan dialect, and Gandhari is a distinctly separate language from the other members of the Middle Indo Aryan family. That is why a separate script was required to write this language. Now, the origin of the Kharoshti scripts, there are different theories, several scholars have put forward their theories regarding the origin of the Kharoshti script and the subject is much debated. First, Sylvia Levy in 1902, he put forward this theory that Kharoshti is a geographical term and it originated from Kharoshtra, from Chinese Kialu Shu Tale, which is a toponym from Kashgar. Now, all of us know that Kashgar is an area in Central Asia. Next is R. Pichel who suggested that actually Kharoshti originated from the name of a sage which is Kialu Sheto meaning asleep corresponding to the Indic original was Kharoshtha. Again, Sylvia Levy modified his view later in 1904 and he suggested that the spelling Kharastri is correct and he connected it with the land, land intermediate between India and China where donkeys and camels were common. Again, Ludwig suggested that the Kharastri's name Kharastri has been derived from the Aramaic word Harutto which, is mean, which means engrave to engrave. Again, Ja Prezulowski connected the name with the term Kharaposta. Now, Kharaposta is the name of a yaksha from the northwestern part of the India and this name occurs in the text Mahamayuri. Khara means the donkey and posta is an Iranian word which means hide of the donkey. Some Central Asian Kharashti documents were written on the hides of donkeys. So, that might have could be the reason why the term Kharashti has been used for the script. Again, H. Hambak suggested that the name Kharoshti was derived from the name of King Kharaosta which occurs in the Mothura lion capital inscription which is again in the Kharoshti script. It is a Kushana period inscription. Harry Falk who is a modern scholar, he accepted the suggestion of Hambak. Again H. W. Bailey, he suggested several Iranian etymologies and among which the most acceptable is royal writing. So, according to him Kharoshti means royal writing. Now, Richard Solomon, uh, an eminent epigraphist of our period, he has suggested that Kharoshti is basically a Sanskritization of an original Iranian name whose etymology is uncertain. Connection with Khara is folk etymology, the original term could have been connected with old Iranian term meaning sovereignty, but the process by which it came to be connected with the script is unclear. Now, B. N. Mukherjee, Professor B. N. Mukherjee who is an authority about the Kharoshti script, he has put forward a slightly different theory. He has suggested that Kharoshti origin uh, around 500 BC, the Achaemenids that is the Persians, they conquered the northwestern part of the Indian subcontinent which, which included the Pakistan. Their official script was Aramaic while the subjects in the Indian provinces used the Brahmi script to write their language Gandhari or Northwestern Prakrit. Now, the Aramaic knowing administrators wanted to write Gandhari in a script that's, that was based on Aramaic and would also be understood very easily with a little effort by their new subjects. Thus, Kharoshti was created as a result of the intercourse between the offices of the satraps and of the native authorities. Now, this is the explanation of Professor B. N. Mukherjee regarding the origin of the Kharoshti script. He has stressed the Aramaic sources of the Kharoshti letters as you can see in number 1 A in Kharoshti, the signs for Kharoshti A that has been derived according to him from the Aramaic letter Aleph 
and at the right column you can see the form of the letter Aramaic letter Alif as it occurs in the Lamghan edict of Ashoka and also the Aramaic documents of 515 to 4 BC. And there are several examples given by Professor B. N. Mukherjee as for example you can see number 4 Ga that is Ga in Kharashti has been derived from the Aramaic letter Gimel which occurs in the form you can see in the right column in the Lamghan rock edict 2 and this is the form of Gimel. So, he has discussed with several examples about the derivation of the Kharashti script from the Aramaic letters. Now, the relation between the Aramaic and the Kharashti letters. There is a specific relation lying between the characters of the two scripts. As for example, in Kharashti, Ba has been derived from the Aramaic letter Bet. Na in Kharashti has been derived from the Aramaic letter Nan, etc. There are some slight alteration in some cases, we find slight alterations in the use of the script like Kharashti La from Lamed, it shows the inversion of the letter. Next, cursivization and stroke reduction in Kharashti Ga which is derived from Aramaic Gimel. There is a case of the addition of extra stroke in Aramaic Kaf to form the Kharashti letter Ka etc. So, in some cases we they could uh, keep the original form of the Aramaic letters and in some cases they have made slight modifications. Now, there are also some connections between the Kharoshti and the Brahmi script as you can see there is much similarity between Brahmi Da and Kharoshti Da also in Brahmi Bha. In uh, look at number 3, their Kharoshti Ma has been derived from Brahmi Ma, only difference is in Brahmi Ma there is a loop at the end of the letter. Now the writing technique of Kharoshti. Now Kharoshti is a pen style of writing in which one type of pen remained in use. In Ashokan inscriptions, it leaves behind the footmark in the form of an upward slant at the lower end of the verticals on the left. This footmark is to be attributed to the style of the writer and not the engraver. In Kushana inscriptions, the verticals gradually thin out into curves as is natural to a pen. The medial U assumes the form of a loop. So, this is the writing technique of the Kharoshti inscriptions. In stones, now stone is a hard surface. So, in stone engravings, the loops which are round, this becomes a triangle. And in coins and medals, we find many superfluous lines or dots, which in the form of ma, ha, ja, and also in ga, da, na. Now, what are the meanings of these superfluous lines? Parsi Gardner thought that these lines stand from the lenden vowels. So, he read Maharaja for Maharaja and Menadrasa for Menadrasa. The paleographic features of the Kharoshti script. Kharoshti script is not an extensive script due to the limited geographical distribution and also due to the limited period of its survival. It does not have clear local variants as we have in the case of Brahmi script. We have several variants as in the Girna rock edict of Brahmi, uh, in the Brahmi script we have a different dialect. In the Brahmi scripts from the south we have a different dialect, but we do not have this regional variation in the Kharoshti script. Only the central Asian variety is different. Central Asian Kharoshti is more cursive as it was written in with pen and ink and the writing surface was also different as we have already discussed that, that these were written on birch bark manuscripts and not on stones. Kharoshti has got a cursive ductus. It is a top oriented script which means that all the changes, all the major changes and development of the script happens in the top of the script and so this has been regarded as a clerk's script. Now, dental sa which is a very important letter of the Kharoshti and it shows the maximum development of the Kharoshti script and the dental sa is also very easy to identify 
and you can also easily identify the period by identifying the form of dental sir is it is if it is open mouth fully open mouth it would belong to a later period it could belong to the kushano period and if it is the fully closed mouth it occurs in the ashokan inscription so closed mouth dental sha is the earliest and then it gradually opens its mouth and in the final development you will find a fully open mouth dental sha but the three types of dental sha occasionally overlap as pointed out by c c dashgupta you can see this is a coin of apollodotus the obverse legend is in greek and the reverse legend is a translation in the kharosthi script it has been read, read from right to left maharayasa tratarasa apala datasa so maharayasa for maharaja uh, tratarasa for soteras is the greek word which is written in the obverse and apala datasa is the prakrit translation of the greek Uh, word apollodotus the name of the king is apollodotus the indo greek inscriptions the development of the kharosthi script in the indo greek inscriptions dated between the 2nd to the 1st century bc the forms are similar to the coins but additional strokes below the verticals are absent you can uh, identify slight angularity in the form of a and ka new letters like ga dha akar and the form of mu show important changes and becomes the standard form this is an indo greek inscription the bajaur casket of menander you can see at the second line which is marked as a mi na drasa maha rajasa kati asa uh, then you can see some letters forming the cross marks which indicates the letter numeral 4 and the lines uh, indicate the numeral 1 so uh, you always add the numerals to learn the figure there are three cross marks there so there are three fours so 4 plus 4 plus 4 it comes to 12 and then plus 1 plus 1 so it comes to 14 so the year is 14 This is again another inscription which belongs to a slightly later period the takht e bahi in takht e bahi is again in pakistan takht e bahi inscription of gondofarnis who is an indo parthian parthian ruler the first line is maharayasa you can easily identify the dental sa which is slightly open mouth but not fully open mouth so it belongs to most probably the first century bc not as early as ashoka which uh, the inscriptions of ashoka has closed mouth dental sa but here the dental sa is slightly open mouth so it belongs to second to first century bc then gudu varasa varsha then the la see the last four numerals the first is a letter for 20 then you have the cross mark so that is 4 then we have two ones so 20 plus 4 plus 1 plus 1 so it comes to year 26 so the inscription is dated in year 26 this is vardak vas inscription this place vardak is again in the northwest this is a kushano period inscription you can see just trace the letter dental sa and see the development of dental sa into a fully open mouth form so this is the characteristic of dental sa in the kushana period this is the other side of the vardak vas inscription it has been engraved on a vas which probably contain the relic of the buddha or one of his disciples this is again a kushana period inscription it is a pedestal of an inscription showing the bodhisattva and the kharosthi script is written at below the inscription you can identify some letters and you can also see the fully open mouth form of dental sa and at the end of the inscription you can also trace the numeral 4 and 1 so it is 4 plus 1 so it is 5 so here is a list of references for the study of the kharosthi scripts stain kono who has who is the earliest scholar who compiled all the kharosthi inscriptions together in the volume of corpus inscriptionum indicarum and there are several other scholars like cc dashgupta a h dani b n mukherji who has done researches on the kharosthi script and the latest is richard salomon whose section on kharosthi script in his book indian epigraphy is very important there is again some discoveries in central asia by sir orelstein in chinese turkistan 
as we have already discussed that, that the central Asian Kharoshti is a different variety. So, about those inscriptions you will find in the book of Sir Oral Strand and these were transcribed and edited by A. M. Boer, Rapson and E. Senert. Now, to summarize, now as we have already discussed that Kharoshti is one of the most important scripts of early India. It was first used by Ashoka in the 3rd century BC, but most probably it originated much earlier, most probably in the 5th to 6th century BC and it was in use um, up to 3rd century AD. And it was mostly used by the foreign rulers and with the decline of the Kushanas, the Kharoshti script fell out of use. So, these are the basic char characteristics and the general features of the Khorishti script. Thank you.